it is uh, a great event, but a lot of time and a lot of uh, dense uh, information share shared by the different speakers. So I know you're a little bit maybe tired, but I hope we'll be uh, uh, doing a great job so that you can uh, work with us, reflect with us on the challenging um, issue related to uh, blue tourism, blue economy, coastal maritime tourism. So um, I'm start we're starting on time. We hope to finish on time at six. Uh, and we've got some uh, speakers that actually have to leave a little bit earlier. So uh, let's hope we can manage to uh, respect uh, the different uh, uh, planning uh, and timing uh, speaking slots. So I'll make a very brief introduction. Um, so my name is Jeremy Foss. I'm the president of an NGO called Eco Union. So I've been working quite a lot in the past uh, four to five years on uh, tourism, sustainability, uh, and general blue economy, including green economy as well, uh, together with local authorities, with some of the uh, participants here, and uh, at, uh, at local, national, and Mediterranean level. So I'm very pleased to be here, and thanks for the organizer, in particular, uh, Aco Latino and the different uh, uh, local authorities for organizing this conference, which is, I think, very much needed and, and could actually help to accelerate the transition towards sustainable tourism. So, briefly, uh, coastal and maritime tourism, as you know, is one of the major sectors of the blue economy. This is part of this general broad co uh, con concept uh, uh, explaining that we can make a sustainable use of common resources such as the Mediterranean Sea, so it is including other sectors like uh, fisheries, um, like maritime transport, uh, wind energy, offshore wind energy, of course, and, and, and definitely tourism, which is actually probably the, the most important uh, sector within the blue economy in terms of GDP contribution between 5 and 10%, according to the country, up to 50% for some small islands or medium-sized islands in the Mediterranean, and it is creating also the majority of jobs uh, in the blue economy sector. So there is definitely a huge potential for uh, tourism, coastal and maritime tourism, and the question here is, is how we can address uh, the tourism uh, development within the context of the blue economy. So there are different initiatives uh, that we are going to be presented today, uh, led by private or public sector, by different institutions. Uh, we've got the WestMed initiative, we've got the uh, UFM uh, work on blue economy, uh, we've got uh, different uh, activities related to, um, to the tourism manifesto and other uh, you know, uh, proposal to share a common vision and common strategy on how to uh, balance uh, tourism, uh, environmental, social and economic impact. So here we've got a different uh, speakers that are going to share briefly. So actually you will have eight minutes. We have reduced a little bit because if not, we will not have time for the questions. Uh, you will have eight minutes to present using PowerPoints or just uh, from uh, your seat. Uh, how you see, uh, you know, from your point of view, uh, you know, the different uh, opportunities to regulate uh, and to manage better the uh, environmental impact and to improve the uh, sustainability of uh, maritime and, coast and coastal tourism within the framework of the blue economy. Because we, as you know, here, the, uh, the sea, the ocean is uh, much uh, you know, uh, shared and uh, competitive resources that is actually very interesting for a lot of different uh, companies, businesses, uh, so including the oil and gas energy. So here there is some, some conflicts that we have to manage somehow. So we like very much to have this kind of broad picture, but of course you are very welcome also to explain what you are doing in, within the different uh, interreg uh, projects on, on, on sustainable maritime and coastal tourism. So we'll follow the order from the, from the planning. So the first one to speak would be uh, Susanna Saints. Uh, she is responsible for the maritime strategy within the Catalan government uh, and working as well to trying to uh, balance uh, fisheries and maritime uh, um, economic uh, affairs uh, for the region of Catalonia. So, Susanna. Super. And so my job <laughs> would be would be to let you know when you, you so have uh, yes, yeah. ten, two minutes left, and then at eight minutes I will have to uh, okay. uh, uh, to change uh, you know uh, the speakers. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thank you for Jeremy and for the invitation for having this opportunity to present what we are doing here in Catalonia. 
Uh, I'll be brief, don't worry. Uh, first of, of all, I would like to present the initiative. The initiative was to develop a maritime strategy with the idea of integrate within the scope of blue economy uh, the management of the, all the sectorial activities that we have at sea. And the principal idea was to integrate and coordinate from the administration level to the, uh, to the society in general. And to have a picture of all of what we have in the sea and the challenge we have in managing all these activities uh, in a coordinated way and sustainable way. So, the, of course, the, the maritime strategy of Catalonia, the, the goal, I would say, the, the goal is the development, the sustainable development of the blue economy. But the strategy makes a strong emphasis in the preservation of ecosystem services, uh, the biodiversity aspects in which most of the sectorial activities depend, and to highlight also how important it is for society to get closer to the sea and to get benefits for what we do in the sea. So basically, briefly, the maritime strategy has the four scope of actions. The first one is the, the economic uh, ambit, and then, as, as I said before, the biodiversity one, I mean, uh, keeping, uh, um, having in mind how important it is to protect ecosystems and preserve ecosystem services, the society as a whole. And another aspect which is very important for us is the governance. I mean, we are working in a co-management scheme and horizontal governments. We think that with challenges that we have today, we cannot address it if we don't involve absolutely uh, everybody. I mean, economic sectors and society as a whole. And the, the thing is that tourism is a cross-cutting issue and activity through the four scopes of action. We realized how important was the, the weight of tourism in the whole strategy. So we identified, although in most of the strategies and reports they put uh, everything within tourism, I mean the maritime, recreational and sports activities, we separated into two different aspects. Why? Because here in Catalonia we have a, a long tradition of um, sporting and maritime nautical activities that are taking place by local society, by local uh, actors, all year round, which is completely different probably than the, uh, the, the tourism or the cruise tourism of other type of, of tourism from people that comes from outside the region. So, Basically, I mean, there is a lot of actions, but the, the tourism in the biodiversity component, we have a lot of actions related to um, addressing the impact of tourism, the, uh, for instance, by anchoring in, at sea or um, marine litter, by educational activities at schools, by uh, adopting models uh, of sustainable nautical maritime recreational activities. We are directly addressing the biodiversity component. The social aspect, uh, in terms of uh, well, employment, the developing and, and giving value to the cultural heritage that we have at, in the coastal regions, to achieve, I mean, we, we really want to get society closer to the sea. I mean, to make, uh, facilitate the access of all what we have in the sea to the whole society. And uh, also we have a gender issue which is important for us. For instance, how to get women closer to the sea. We have initiatives, for instance, in capacity building. And uh, if women uh, approve the, the exams, they, uh, they are exempt of paying uh, the inscription of the course. This kind of activities always in order to promote the activities. And the final one is the governments. We, we want to get everybody, everybody involved from the administration level. I mean, we are 13 departments in the government of Catalonia. And uh, we are all involved in the design of this uh, strategy and in the implementation. We need everybody on board. And uh, at last, just an, an example that we have here in Costa Brava. It's, uh, we are doing a, a co-management case, uh, which has, uh, you can see also there is economic activity, there is a strong uh, 
important activity of the fishing fleet, and also by diverse nautical recreational activities. These are nautical uh, centers giving services, giving capacity building, education, uh, charter activities, and on top of that, we have an intense tourist activity. It's a Natura 2000 area in which we are doing a maritime spatial planning with an, in horizontal well with all actors. We have uh, uh, created this um, a co-management group at the Costa Brava in a place called Bashemporda this year in January. We, have, we are making participatory meetings to design the maritime uh, spatial planning from uh, actors on all different economic sectors and society. And this is the web portal in which you also is open. There is a space for participation through the web. And basically, this is our, um, our message. I mean, integration, everybody on board, from administrations to the society. Perfect. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Six minutes, so that's great. Thank you. Seven. Six. Uh, Excellent. Thanks, Susanna. I, I strongly recommend for the participants to have a look on the website. I think you can download the strategy in English. I think it's yes, in the Yes, it is in, in English, in Spanish, and Catalan. And yeah. uh, from what we have seen, this is very much an innovative strategy, and I think this could inspire as well other regions uh, in the Mediterranean to actually localize this kind of management processes at a regional level. Excellent, Susanna. Uh, now we'll move to Roberto. Uh, yeah. Uh, Roberto Montanari is um, one of the manager of the EU project uh, of one EU project, uh, and is coming from the region of Emilia, Emilia Romagna. So, uh, thanks, Roberto. You got also uh, eight minutes. Uh, yes. Okay. The microphone is functioning. Okay. Uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you to the um, organizers, the um, Blade or Med uh, project. Uh, uh, for this kind of invitation, giving me the opportunity to share some uh, uh, experience. I'm here ripened uh, in my region and also during this uh, uh, beautiful experience in this uh, co-evolved project. I, I'm here today to speak, uh, uh, yes, uh, mm, by the experience I mm, ripened uh, in my region working in the coastal zone uh, integrated management, but also um, as a representative of the Bologna Charter Initiative, a regional initiative uh, started for uh, on uh, coastal Mediterranean coastal issues uh, and also for the Coevolve uh, uh, project, uh, um, you know, um, part of the sustainable tourism community. Uh, the Bologna Charter is an initiative. Uh, I, I try to uh, make uh, um, an, over, uh, an overview of uh, the um, the topics uh, in order to then uh, go through some specific messages to to leave to the to, to the audience and to the discussion. The Bologna Charter Initiative uh, uh, it is uh, an initiative started by the um, regional uh, level in the Mediterranean uh, today, um, counting uh, 29 coastal regions and uh, also the uh, Inter-Mediterranean Commission of the CPMR. And the uh, initiative uh, uh, following the ICZM MSP principle started to uh, define a strategy for the coastal protection and uh, uh, sustainable development uh, um, for developing actions uh, together with uh, uh, maritime regions uh, and created a joint action plan along with a number of projects started in these last years. Uh, some of these are of, of course, uh, co-evolve in the Interreg Med, the Med Cost for Blue Growth, that is uh, a project initiative labeled by the Union for the Mediterranean, and the Co-evolve for uh, Blue Growth, that is a new project that is starting now within the INI, uh, ANI mm, CBC Med uh, program focused on coastal and maritime sustainable tourism. Uh, these uh, three projects are uh, somehow connected to one of the strategic objectives of the uh, joint action plan of the Bologna Charter about the sustainable use of resources and coastal governance for the, uh, the blue growth. Um, this is the um, uh, uh, more or less the, at a glance the architecture of the project. We designed this architecture and launched 
these uh, initiatives, thanks also to the CPMR and also to the Union for the Mediterranean, in order to give legs for this uh, initiative, for this uh, methodology we set up in Coevolve, in order to have positive impacts on the long term, and also starting dialoguing uh, with the, uh, the two rims of the Mediterranean. So working together also with uh, the uh, partners of the South and East and also the Balkan area of uh, the Mediterranean. All these projects uh, are uh, sharing a, a vision, are sharing a, um, an approach that uh, can be resumed in three points, uh, that is sustainability, inclusivity and diversification, making the proposals uh, matching with also the uh, 2030 Sustainable Development Goals agenda. And uh, um, it is... Um, uh, the first, the first uh, main uh, indication coming from the, um, this, this uh, uh, strategy is the diversification. We already uh, listened this <laughs> today, but on, not only today about this uh, objective. The, um, what about the competent authorities should, and the policies at local level should uh, promote and valorize costs, valorize costs, seal inlands as, uh, as well as the inland areas, and uh, create uh, promotion uh, and, pr and promote uh, uh, offers uh, for developing uh, uh, alternative targeted specific offers. Uh, cover a wide, uh, uh, a wide uh, teams, uh, uh, cultural, uh, historical, archaeological, traditional, gastronomic, cycling, trekking, and so on, for each territory, and uh, um, uh, promote these offers uh, also uh, through uh, a different uh, um, uh, offer uh, for different periods of the year, uh, but also govern uh, and regulate the decisionality. Uh, govern and regulate means uh, to take into account uh, every kind of issues uh, concerning also the risks given by uh, the different use of territory in different uh, seasons of the year, uh, and also the different uh, uh, use of resources uh, uh, in the different uh, uh, season of the year that uh, should uh, bring, uh, could bring uh, uh, issues to be governed and regulated. Uh, another main topic is the inclusivity. Uh, so, uh, an inclusive approach of coastal and maritime uh, tourism, uh, coastal and maritime tourism development, uh, it is uh, um, fundamental because uh, as uh, the colleague uh, from uh, Catalonia uh, said before, uh, we have to be all together uh, with a, a shared objective and also working together to better uh, develop our offer, but also to, uh, to better develop the wellness in our territory. And two so, uh, two, minutes, two minutes left. Valorize the local communities, traditions, uh, activate uh, 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 skills and competence of citizens uh, at uh, local operators, uh, activate participatory process, uh, process at local level to identify and co-design uh, options and offers, identify people and the expertise to be involved and define roles and participation tools to do this, uh, and arrange and support local networks and uh, connect local thematic offers with the main touristic operators. Um, in the meantime, also sustainability should be declined in different uh, uh, aspects, the social, uh, environmental and the economic dimension. Uh, very important is the social, for, because the inclusion is, uh, is one of the main uh, objectives of uh, a sustainable tourism. Decent job, uh, good work condition, adequate salaries, respect of rights. We know that working together and uh, uh, looking at uh, a wider scale in the Mediterranean, we, we know that uh, uh, this could be um, a main issue in, uh, in different territories of the One Mediterranean. Minute. One minute. So the environmental and the economic uh, uh, aspects uh, um, are well, uh, well, well known. Um, we, can, we propose a methodology, a methodology to analyze and shape a sustainable 
uh, and uh, coastal maritime tourism in specific destinations. Analysis and threats of enabling factors that are listed uh, on uh, the right uh, of, this, of, the, of the screen uh, set up participatory process to involve the local communities and elaborate strategic plan and local action plans to, uh, and also create local coordination mechanism to prepare the offer but also to govern the implementation of the offer and of uh, the... Uh, so, for ending, uh, some key messages. We know that the development of coastal maritime tourism is accompanied by significant challenges with a lot of aspects that uh, on which uh, uh, the, the attention to sustainability is, uh, is a must. The demand of greening tourism is, and the diversified tourism is more and more increasing. The development of sustainable and more uh, diversified tourism uh, has the potential to create new jobs. Investing in sustainable and diversified tourism can bring new economic opportunities for local operators and, uh, and, uh, and uh, communities. And uh, the private sector uh, local stakeholders and communities must l work together with uh, public sectors in order to uh, design a new future for the, for, the, uh, for the territory. And then the last, that is not, because it is not the updated uh, presentation <laughs> I left before, mm. is that uh, the vision and the lead role of the uh, competent authorities, local and uh, public competent authorities, is fundamental and a precondition to uh, develop uh, really a diversified, inclusive, and sustainable coastal and maritime Thank you, tourism. Roberto. Yeah, great. Just Perfect. <laughs> it was the last slide. Excellent. <laughs> I also recommend for the participants to read the Bologna Charter. I think it is a great piece of work, and this is very helpful uh, to start discussions with different partners, including local authorities. And I think also the project you are undertaking on within the co-ever both uh, within the Interreg and now within the Mediterranean Scope is very interesting, very much needed to build this common strategy on how we want to develop tourism around the Mediterranean coast. So great, thank you a lot. Now we'll move to the next speaker. So it's going to be uh, my colleague Angelica, Angeliki uh, Veneti, who is the Director of Industry, Energy and Natural Resources within the region of Thessaly. And she will be also represent representing and introducing the Blue Med project, one of the Interreg uh, initiatives. So we've got also eight minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Oh, I have it. Uh, thank you, Jeremy, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to have us uh, to, to, present, to uh, present our project here today and for all the work that uh, you've been doing here. Uh, so, the challenge for Europe's uh, coastal and maritime resorts is to exploit this potential sustainably in order to offer attractive jobs to its people. Uh, coastal and maritime tourism can be a major source of uh, growth and jobs, especially for the young. As a part of EU's blue growth strategy, the coastal and maritime tourism sector has been identified as an area with special potential to foster a smart, sustainable and inclusive Europe. It is the biggest maritime sector in terms of uh, gross value added and employment, and according to the Blue Growth Study, is expected to grow by 2 to 3% by 2020. The natural resources and beauty of coastal areas have made them popular destinations for the visitors. Many tourists nowadays uh, seek a unique and customized experience rather than the more traditional type of sun and sea package holiday. These uh, changes on the demand side require reaction and adaptation by operators and destinations. The sector should develop new products promoting attractiveness and accessibility of uh, coastal and uh, marine archaeology, uh, maritime heritage, underwater tourism and eco-gastronomic activities and other innovative activities. So, about our project now, about Blue Med. Blue Med project contributes to a more sustainable and responsible coastal and maritime tourism. And uh, uh, the underwater museums and diving parks represent the most advanced state of attempts to simultaneously facilitate public access and protect underwater cultural, natural and cultural heritage. Through pilot and site, at sites with different degrees of development, 
involved regions can exploit, or municipalities can exploit competitive advantages for sustainable and responsible tourism development. Uh, contribution of BlueMed project. BlueMed's aim is to support competent government authorities, develop strategies, plans and policies for local coastal and island economies of the Mediterranean region in adopting a sustainable and responsible model for tourism development. This will be achieved by planning, testing and coordinating underwater museums, diving parks and knowledge awareness centers. Uh, designation and implementation of innovative uh, tourism products that boost capacity building in the largest economic sector of the Med area and actively contribute to heritage protection and preservation, resulting from raising public awareness and providing policy consultation. Uh, while respecting the principles of the protection of natural and cultural resources, Blue Med's goal is to protect the marine ecosystem of the Mediterranean by aligning planning and implementation with the ICE, uh, ICZM protocol, UNESCO 2001 Convention, biodiversity and EU strategies. To promote innovation in the diving industry and improve divers' experience through innovative diving services and technologies, to attract an important part of the increasing number of people who choose diving tourism and to introduce the wider public to underwater cultural heritage by means of 3D immersive visualization in museum exhibitions and CACs. About CACs, knowledge awareness centers, will operate all year round extending tourism, uh, tourist season, will act as environmental awareness rising mechanism through integrated information activities, and will prove to be very efficient facilities in enhancing traditional museum exhibitions. The combination of traditional and innovative management practices will considerably diversify the CACs offer and will contribute to their success. This approach makes CACs a valuable tool for providing a wider range of solutions to both local communities, operators and incoming tourists. BlueMed will pay special attention to the networking of sites and creation of an underwater natural and cultural routes in the Mediterranean, thematic itinerary. Uh, the objective of this web platform is the unified tourism promotion of the underwater natural and cultural heritage sites that can be visited in the Mediterranean Sea, to support the networking and cooperation of all the Mediterranean stakeholders, and to facilitate the transfer and capitalization of the activities and deliverables developed in the Blue Met project. About here, you can see uh, this itinerary, and is open, and you can use it already. Uh, BlueMed provides a unique experience and knowledge opportunity, not only to divers, uh, not only to non-divers. Non-divers uh, will be able to enjoy uh, archaeological artifacts while improving their knowledge and interest in underwater natural cultural heritage through CACs, which are based on the design of an exhibition and information center where advanced digital technologies and uh, combined with the traditional museum practice and divers will be able to take part to guided tours organized in dedicated underwater trails by using the augmented diving system. Okay, already finished. <laughs> we have five pilot sites in our project. We are uh, 10 partners from five different countries. We have two pilot sites in Greece, in the region of Thessaly, uh, two pilot sites in Italy and one pilot site in Croatia. Uh, uh, you can see some of uh, some photos of uh, the underwater uh, museums we have in Western Pagasetic, Greece. Uh, these are new photos from the um, excavation we had some months ago. Uh, we have the classic uh, shipwreck in Peristera Island in Alonisos, Greece. This is the second pilot site we have in Greece. Also new photos from this site. And this is a rendering of a CAC, the Knowledge Awareness Center. Um, this is an example. Uh, this is from Amaliapoli, it's a pilot site in Greece. And this is the other 
uh, knowledge awareness center we have, uh, we are going to open during this summer in Alonisos, an island in Sporada, central Greece. Uh, the technologies, you can see the technologies to be used at the, the CAC exhibition. <coughs> okay, sorry. Uh, the marine protected area of Capo Rizzuto, Italy. It's another pilot site we have. And the Tzaftat, uh, Cyprus in Croatia. And uh, the underwater uh, park uh, of Baia in Naples, Italy. This is a Roman town. Uh, and the other sites uh, were uh, Cyprus, and now you can see the uh, Roman uh, town. Thank you. Thank Perfect. you very much. Thank you. Just a minute. I have to uh, say something about our last event. It's a convention that uh, we are going to have in October, 16 to uh, 18 of uh, October, in the Museum of Acropolis in Athens. Okay, and Thank we you. were all, all welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks a lot for sharing this uh, Blue Med project, uh, trying to uh, highlight uh, underwater uh, cultural heritage that is sometimes not very well known. And I think it was very much diving into the blue economy, right, somehow, and to explore what's happening uh, under the sea. Um, I would also uh, uh, reflect briefly on the opportunity uh, to engage with the divers in tracking biodiversity and climate change impact uh, underwater because I think this is something very much needed and you have the opportunity to engage with uh, scientific partners also to bring this massive knowledge, you know, or the divers that goes underwater and can actually see what's happening there and give back this uh, those data that are very much necessary then for policymakers or for scientific to assess what, uh, happen what is happening with the climate change impact. So there is different initiatives on a global scale, so I'm happy also to give you some few uh, contacts if needed. Great, excellent. Um, now we'll move to the next speaker, so we have a small change, so it will be uh, Andrea Barbanti because you, uh, you have to leave uh, to catch a train uh, or a boat, I don't know. Um, um, so um, uh, Andrea is a research manager in the National Research Council uh, of Italy uh, within the Institute of Marine Sciences. So he will also uh, briefly, I guess, uh, present uh, the Blue Med initiative and some of the uh, work on blue economy. I know that uh, you have been very much active on, on this field. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you all for your kindness in being here this time of the day to listen to our uh, messages. I will also use a few slides just to be, be as much as effective I can as I can in, in delivering those messages on sustainable tourism and, and the blue economy, or the so-called blue growth. I was borrowing here uh, a word from the Coeval project that Roberto already introduced, not to speak about Coeval, but just to refer to the fact that uh, sustainable tourism, tourism, coastal and maritime tourism, should uh, be aware that it's not the only player on the playground, and it should Coeval together uh, uh, with other sea, sea uses. Um, now, as I said, coastal and, and, and maritime tourism is one of the sea uses, and all the uses together, uh, together apparently, are kind of uh, uh, developing or, or, or shaping a so-called Mediterranean blue gold rush. For sure, I don't know if there will be a real blue gold rush, but there is an opportunity, a big opportunity there, and a challenge is to, to, to make it happen and make it happen in a sustainable way, uh, in, a, in, a, in a way so that everybody, all the countries and, and communities can benefit from this uh, rush. Uh, coastal and maritime tourism is one sector of blue economy. This is obvious, uh, but we have to be all aware, fully aware of this and, and manage uh, the, 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 the story in a, in a coherent way with this, with this awareness. Uh, to make this, we need to ensure coexistence of coast and sea uses together with coastal and maritime tourism, and not only avoid, uh, uh, let's say, conflicts, which is the first step, of course, of the game, but also to, to promote all the synergies as much as, much as possible. Uh, how to do this? 
Well, ICZM MSP offer us the principles, the methodologies, and also the formal streams to do this. Uh, we are implementing the, uh, the new, um, new, not that new now, but uh, uh, the, we are implementing in EU countries the MSP, MSP directive. We have uh, the ICZM uh, uh, protocol under the Barcelona Convention. So these are the main conceptual framework and, and also, I mean, uh, formal processes. Again, I, I, I stress this wording for doing this. Um, ICZM MSP, uh, it's just a tool. It's not, I mean, uh, it's a tool uh, to develop and achieve integrated maritime uh, policies in a, in a balanced and transparent way. Those are the principles we have to apply. And sustainable tourism is within this process, or should be uh, within this process. Uh, through this process, you're forced to develop your vision, to better harmonize your, your policies and, and your policy implementation processes. And I put on purpose the uh, maritime <laughs> strategy of Catalonia uh, uh, because it's an example on how uh, bottom-up processes from the regions, from the local communities can, can actually develop uh, these visions uh, and, and, and feed into the, uh, into the higher uh, level processes from the, from the Commission down to the countries, to the local communities. Uh, to do this, you need to build a community that is working on this concept, that, that is implementing this, the, these concepts. And the message for this audience is that the sustainable tourism community should, as much as possible, be part of a wider, of the wider uh, uh, blue growth uh, community. This is already happening. What needs to be done to me, and this is the message, is to, to, to structure as much as possible uh, these processes, this community building uh, process through uh, formal, uh, regular, well-structured processes, permanent processes, like, these are just examples, we have regional strategies or initiatives, user, Westmed, we have uh, working groups. UFM is, is 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 managing, is promoting working groups where on on blue growth. We have national clusters. Uh, we have uh, expert groups on MSP or or even the, the MSP platform. Those are all ways of building this 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 community. And I hope very much then that, that uh, um, of course Interregmed is also from from the um, uh, sustainable tourism community side. Uh, Playing, playing this game. Uh, um, to f f for an efficient and effective, I'd say, uh, process, you need to combine, this is a message uh, um, quite strong to me, a, a strategic long-term vision with concrete actions. Otherwise, it remains, you know, in the air. And, uh, and uh, so that the message is think strategically you need a strategy, you need a vision, but then act locally. If you are not able to be concrete, uh, uh, responding to the demands from local communities and sectors and sea uses, you, you will not do anything and produce anything, and people will not trust in you anymore. Um, do not forget, of course, the environment, uh, environmental ass assets, which by the way, are the ones you're basing most of your touristic offers. Uh, and, and be aware that sustainable tourism is part of a wider, uh, again, I'm bringing back uh, the attention to the, to the wider uh, blue economy, uh, um, uh, say, say, arena frame, uh, is part of a wider ecosystem-based approach uh, to ensure long-term uh, sustainability of sea uses. Uh, we are not starting from scratch. There is a wide range of uh, policies in place that, uh, that, uh, that uh, allow us to, to put into practice this uh, statement. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is the last slide uh, that, uh, that is uh, actually mentioning the Blue Med initiative, which is not the Blue Med Interreg Med project. <laughs> Uh, and it's just to raise the attention on the importance within the blue growth, say, world, and specifically with, for, for, the, for the sustainable tourism community of research and innovation. And I would focus on innovation. 
there is a wide range of research and innovation uh, uh, related or driven products and services directly serving sustainable tourism that should be uh, highlighted uh, and promoted, and I hope this will be uh, part of the work, the activity that the sustainable uh, tourism community will, will, uh, will support in the next years. Uh, very concretely, new tourism products, uh, destination management uh, products and services, assessment uh, products and services to assess and mitigate impacts of tourism on the environment. Uh, you have a partner, Blue Med already is uh, recognizing uh, um, uh, tourism, sustainable tourism, as one of the uh, key topics in the research and innovation agenda. So we will, from, from, from the research and innovation, uh, say, community, uh, will try to do our best to support the sustainable tourism community in this, in this uh, research and innovation, uh, say, effort. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrea, for sharing uh, your reflection on how to integrate uh, blue tourism or marine and coastal tourism within the global context of blue economy. And I think this is uh, uh, coming also from the work of, of the European Commission, uh, supporting uh, the Blue Med initiative to put money to improve actually our, our research and technologies and also services related to a sustainable blue growth, um, or at least blue economy. So now we move to the, to the last uh, speaker, Alessandra Sensi from the UFM. So uh, she's the head of uh, environment and blue economy sector. And I think it's the right you know, uh, uh, time you know, to have you uh, at the final uh, uh, slot of the, of the panel because you can probably share the work of the UFM on blue economy, which has been uh, impressive in the past two to three years. Uh, I was actually happy to collaborate in, in, uh, in, um, somehow in uh, some of your uh, events. And, uh, and I think you are working towards a common vision that could be actually help to uh, integrate the different pieces that has been shared uh, uh, already uh, uh, now and in the other uh, interact projects. So please, the floor is yours. Exactly. Thank you very much, uh, Thank you everybody and colleagues actually for having been introducing indeed many uh, uh, subjects and approaches that uh, we are indeed developing under the Union for the Mediterranean, being the Union uh, for the Mediterranean and Intergovernmental Organization. So let's say the focus of our activities is very much indeed on this come up here. Very much no, you, you want to choose so mine? Come on. Or use a mic. Okay. Thank you very much. Wait, wait. Thank you. It's very much actually on involving the countries of the South and actually looking at the Mediterranean as one. Uh, just, you know, recalling the three concepts of, you know, uh, political forum, which are indeed the, the highest level we work at, uh, the regional platforms, which is the more technical slash strategic level we work through, which actually Andrea already referred to, and let's say the project dimension, because as it was correctly said, it's very important to have a vision, in our case, a vision of the 43 countries working, collaborating on a consensus, let's say, based and on equal footing, as well as having indeed concrete activities that can support uh, uh, this vision and make it real. As far as tourism uh, in particular is concerned, I would like uh, to refer uh, to the Blue Economy Ministerial Declaration of 2015. I think we went a long way through that uh, since uh, that time. Uh, the main, let's say, concept where need to build a common understanding of blue economy, indeed to improve maritime governance, which touch upon what, uh, what has been said and indeed uh, is played around the concept of uh, maritime uh, special planning and integrated coastal zone management. There was a strong focus also on blue research, technology, innovation and, all, and um, skills. Uh, indeed, we are always talking of blue jobs, uh, blue employment as one of the areas of focus. Overall, as UFM, we are very much focused on the development of the region, so definitely the aspects related to jobs 
are uh, of particular, let's say, attention, especially in this historical phase, as well as on sustainable consumption and production. And I wanted to mention that because among, let's say, the main ongoing initiative, uh, which uh, uh, we are um, sort of supporting through um, our work, we do have uh, the WestMed initiative, which is actually an initiative where uh, tourism is indeed uh, uh, also part of within the SCP component as identified by the countries. So there is more a focus, of course, on sustainability, but indeed more on the environmental, let's say, uh, component. On the uh, WestMed is a sort of advanced partnership of the WestMed uh, Mediterranean countries, uh, still open to the others, but indeed, I mean, for those that are willing to advance. BlueMed is the initiative that indeed Andrea was referring to. Originally, it was a, a European initiative. I think we have been working hard and successfully to make of it a Mediterranean initiative, having that expanded to the countries of the South. And indeed, even there, ecotourism is very present. Then we have Panoramed, which is indeed another initiative where uh, tourism has been uh, prioritized. Actually, there were two calls uh, uh, this year, which one is indeed on tourism. It's a bit based on a top-down uh, top approach, differently from the others, but still with the idea of building you know, partnership and new opportunities uh, for uh, different stakeholders to join. What indeed I wanted to uh, show is and recall are more or less the same pro uh, concept that the uh, colleagues have been talking about. These are the main axes of work uh, agreed uh, within the Blue Economy uh, Ministerial. We have the so-called Blue Economy Forum, which is an approach agreed by the 43, who now we want to bring the dossier forward. And it's indeed made of four components. One is the Working Group on Blue Economy, which is mainly composed by, of course, the official country's representative, but uh, a broad, let's say, um, range of stakeholders, uh, of which many are present here. And let me mention also, you know, uh, CPRM, which was, and is, of course, a strong uh, partner on the Blue Economy dossier, uh, helping us also, you know, to complement the national with the local, with the regional dimension, uh, very successfully, I would say. Then we have another component on uh, stakeholders. So this has been decided by the countries, and indeed uh, it goes back to the concept that also the colleagues from Catalonia, Roberto, Andrea, were referring to the importance of having all the communities as part of it. We have that, of course, in different forms, different you know, association of uh, categories, NGOs, academia, and so on, but it comes out as a very, uh, let's say, broad uh, consultation process. I would also like to say that we have the very successful uh, conference in 2017. We will have another conference next year. And these conferences are also preparatory steps to the ministerial decision. In this way, also, we feel uh, that you know, uh, civil society and other categories do have the opportunity to highlight, let's say, the priorities that, of course, the ministers uh, can decide on. Then we have a part on capacity building and uh, another one actually on public awareness which goes through a, a platform, a Blue Economy Stakeholders platform that is up and running um, as a, a web site. Um, I'll go fast. Um, I wanted also to recall the importance of a ministerial on environment, just because indeed we are just referring to ecotourism for us and for the ministerial as well on blue economy, which was a spin off of this one. Of course, environment is at the basis of uh, all, uh, let's say, the planning, indeed, the, the maritime special planning as well. And uh, maybe also to recall that, uh, uh, let's say, within the Secretariat, tourism is a transversal issue. Uh, we are actually attacking that from our, let's say, side more as an environmental division than um, from the climate change, uh, let's say, side and many other the employment side. So it doesn't uh, stand as a separate one, rather as a transversal tool. We had an event actually focused on tourism, the first one in November 2018, where different issues, as discussed by the colleagues, were already uh, tackled, indeed, on product diversification and seasonality, exactly as Roberto, you were mentioning, uh, tackling new markets, positioning the Mediterranean as green destination, digitalization, <coughs> small and medium-sized enterprises, the impact of climate change, 
job creation, standardization, and indeed governance, which is what uh, the day is about. To conclude, I would like to go back to uh, the project that was uh, shown, indeed, uh, Medcos for Blue Growth. Uh, as it was mentioned, uh, that the uh, project started as Coevolve, then it was labeled as UFM project Medcos for Blue Growth to envisage the participation of the countries of the South. And indeed, it was success uh, successfully financed uh, in January this year as uh, Cobalt uh, for Blue Growth uh, um, by the CBC uh, program. So we are now having fully on board the Tunisia and Lebanon, and we are also very actively fundraising for Morocco and uh, Montenegro. I'm just finishing, just to say that also marine litter is a, a tackle within the UFM, not just as environmental problem, but also as economic problem, also as economic problem for the tourism sector. So we are trying, let's say, to uh, let's say go beyond the project vision and uh, to connect the dots, basically, and that we do through the different, let's say, working groups and the different uh, events. And uh, this is just uh, maybe a last uh, information that we are moving, as I mentioned, towards uh, two new uh, ministerial declarations. They just happen to happen at the same time, but indeed they are a good opportunity for the tourism sector as well. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Alessandra, for sharing the work that is doing the UFM. Uh, you have been very active in the past two to three years, and also recommend you to participants to uh, register to the online platform where you can actually uh, um, see all the different pieces of uh, reports, events, and also connect with other Blue Economy uh, uh, members. Uh, that is, I think, is a key asset in order to try to find a kind of common strategy so that tourism can, f can try to fit with other uh, uh, blue economy sectors. And I think this is challenging, this is not easy. We're going to have conflicts, let's be very honest. Uh, but I think for at least for the tourism community, you should be ready to put you know, the opportunity for for the economy, for the uh, environment, to have a sustainability within this uh, sector. So uh, we've got uh, 30 minutes uh, for questions, which is great, which is amazing. Uh, so thanks a lot for uh, you know, keeping uh, the time uh, as short as possible. Um, so you have the opportunity to send uh, questions uh, through the app. And I think we can see the question. I don't know if there is any question. There is no questions. Okay, so there is the opportunity to have direct questions, and I think that's much better. Uh, we are a small, uh, small room, so uh, we can have a mic, I think. So uh, I would like you maybe to, uh, uh, to present yourself very quickly, and maybe you know, to share. It could be a comment. It could be a question. It could be a reflection. It could be something different. Uh, they should be short, and we we'll try to have maybe two or three different uh, um, interventions, and then I uh, can give uh, the floor to the uh, to the speaker. So please, just raise your hands, uh, introduce yourself, and uh, and uh, you know share your uh, your comments or questions. So don't be shy. Um, we have time. So if not, I would just pick up names. I I know I know Rob Roberto. You'll be the first to ask a question. Some, so, someone else? <laughs> okay, you want, you want us to share some reflection? Uh, you, can we use a mic? And be ready, mean, meanwhile, so just, you know, you know, speak for one, two minutes so that they can prepare another questions. Well, um, more than, well, I, maybe I have a question at the end of my reflection. At, uh, what we are trying to do to do as a community is to create um, the message of a, a very quite a big community of actors dealing with uh, sustainable tourism in several ways uh, around the Mediterranean and I would like to know to know maybe from from your perspective uh, how important could be to have these communities as a reference for um, the, 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 the several plans or initiatives that you just mentioned. In order for us also to, to help us to understand uh, as we can move forward as a community from what we did, 
So from the several activities and results and actions and best practices that the several projects uh, uh, realized, uh, how to move from that to something which can be important and can be included in these plans. How can we, with using this word, capitalizing the, the, these results towards your initiatives? We've got another question from uh, Raffaele Mancini. Yes, please. Plan Bleu, just present yourself quickly. Thank you. Thanks, Jerome. <laughs> I like to be at school. I was trying to sit in at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now um, let's say that uh, my collaboration with Blue Tour Med is, uh, as you know, Jerome, but for the others, I'm in charge to, <coughs> to work on the, on the policy paper and the, the advocacy plan of Blue Tour Med. Uh, in this, uh, let's say in 18 projects, we found out that there are a lot of um, tools, methodologies that can be capitalized. I think I would like to know from you uh, if you think that there are initiatives or there are spaces in which these tools can be, uh, let's say, can be capitalized, can be disseminated through the activity, the initiative that you will take, uh, that uh, they, they will take a place uh, within uh, your work. Excellent. And the last question, Miguel, yeah, please. Uh, Miguel Garcia Raiz, I, I actually will be speaking in the next session. Uh, uh, so, and Alessandra works with me, so it's, it's all a bit confusing. But um, a question which I made earlier uh, to Roberto, Andrea, uh, and I can also answer perhaps, um, this is a sustainable tourism convention. Uh, and I'd like to ask you on the relation with what could be tourism conventions. That is to say, the difficult uh, relation between uh, a growth employment sector very uh, obsessed with, with certain type of uh, um, type of, of, of economy of scale and, and of growth um, and, and and the solutions that you are offering here today and, and the work that you all, that you all do and many of you actually present uh, or are linked to, to government at a different levels so part of the answer is already there but nonetheless um, it is uh, I think it remains a challenge turning the sustainable tourism proposals ideas good best practices into influence into that other wide community of tourism without adjectives. So, um. thank you. Thanks. We've got three different questions. Thanks a lot for your questions. So now you have time to, uh, you know, to answer. Just pick up the questions you would like to answer, and then we'll give the floor to each one of you. So just be ready. Look, I'll just uh, take the one from uh, Roberto and the one from uh, Raffaele. Uh, I mean, I just want to share that we are having a very, um, let's say, productive uh, talk and dialogue with the Joint Secretariat. Indeed, uh, we feel that all this work on capitalization has indeed a great potential. There are communities that are already, let's say, attending our working group, and as was referring to before, they are already feeding the process, all the process, the policy process, but also, let's say, the more concrete, let's say, uh, project uh, level processes. Um, with the, uh, indeed the uh, outcomes uh, and the results uh, of uh, the community reflection and thinking. Of course, again, what is very important for us is that this be an extended and inclusive process also for the countries of the South. So our wish for the future, and I think, you know, again, we are working along the same line with the Joint Secretariat, is to have them more and more involved also in the inter uh, activities. So not to have the Mediterranean split in uh, inter and others, but rather having them already in the inter so that, you know, whatever uh, outcomes uh, come uh, out of it, I mean, uh, can um, be a solid one uh, based on uh, ownership and indeed the shared thinking. And this is already happening, but there is, of course, uh, a lot of potential to exploit in that respect. Thank you. Uh, I will answer Roberto's uh, uh, question. Um, 
it's about we found uh, I speak for uh, for us for Blue Med. Uh, I think that we found uh, these uh, two and a half years a lot of synergies in a lot of projects, not only uh, in this uh, thematic area, sustainable tourism, but from also other horizontal projects. And um, it depends on um, the regional authorities uh, or the uh, municipalities authorities, the policy makers in general, to capitalize uh, the um, uh, different uh, projects uh, because there are a lot of projects not in med area but in specific pilot sites um, in uh, regions and uh, municipalities and um, it's a very good opportunity to persuade them to capitalize the, the projects. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks. Um, my answer will focus uh, on Miguel and Roberto questions. <laughs> And uh, just to say that uh, I understand that tourism without uh, uh, adjective is more sensible, sensitive to business and uh, turnover. Uh, I think that uh, uh, the, the action could be on two ways. One is uh, uh, rising up awareness uh, among tourists, uh, and we all, we all are tourists, so, as someone told uh, in uh, one of the <laughs> uh, sessions this morning. Um, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, arise uh, awareness uh, about the sustainability, the importance of the sustainability in terms of uh, 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 maintaining uh, the, 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 the territory, maintaining uh, the, um, the quality of the environment, of the ecosystem, of the uh, coastal and mountain areas and so on. It is a value added for the fruition of this, uh, of this territory. And on the other hand, uh, making uh, uh, the uh, tourist operators more sensible on this. Uh, um, Greening demand incre increasing, uh, greening and diversified uh, for a greening and diversified tourism increasing among uh, the tourists. Um, so this kind of two uh, actions should be done: one directed to the the, the 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 wider people and one directed to the tourist operator, making them uh, aware that uh, the uh, development of uh, sustainable tourism. Uh, means could means also a very uh, important opportunities for create new uh, jobs and also new businesses and also new uh, turnover <laughs> a wider turnover for uh, uh, also because of the difference the di diversification and the seasonality will open new uh, doors uh, for for new businesses about the um, the uh, importance of the uh, sustainable uh, uh, tourism community, I think it is uh, uh, fundamental <laughs> for, for the future. Uh, as I said before, uh, we created this kind of uh, architecture uh, of uh, project initiatives for the future, uh, but this need uh, obviously um, uh, um, a wide uh, collaboration and uh, thinking about uh, doing uh, activities, doing actions, uh, also in the southeast uh, rims of the Mediterranean, working with uh, uh, partners uh, that has uh, different uh, uh, problems and issues to be tackled. Uh, I think that uh, uh, to have a consolidated and uh, um, wide uh, uh, sustainable tourism community means to also to have a basin from which uh, can be uh, kept um, competencies, uh, expertise, uh, tools developed uh, and so on that can be applied and can be or strong support uh, for the development of uh, uh, pilot action for new actions for the uh, sustainable tourism development in uh, all around the Mediterranean uh, areas. And so it's the, my, my answer is definitely yes, it is a, a very important uh, issue, a very important uh, consideration to have uh, this uh, community well-developed 
and uh, in time. Thank you. Andrea, maybe, because mm -hmm. you have to leave yes. very much early. I can add a few comments to, to, the, to the answer, trying to, to respond to, to Roberto and to Miguel, at least. Um, how, how can the joined uh, communities be effective um, in, the, in, their, in their activity? Well, I think to me that uh, joining the effort of, for example, the sustainable uh, tourism community with the blue growth community, with the uh, ecosystem community, referring to the three horizontal uh, interreg med streams, uh, it will make you more effective in producing new effective projects. But this is not the real, uh, say, goal, I'd say. Uh, you will be effective if you will be able to influence, uh, I mean, main, uh, main uh, uh, policy implementation streams. I'm referring to the MSP process, for example, and, and, and there's a lot to be transferred in, in, this, in this field. I'm referring to smart specialization strategies that uh, the regions uh, are, are developing or updating uh, uh, for the use of structural funds. I'm referring even to national clusters action plans that are deciding how to, uh, I mean, uh, move forward in, in their countries uh, uh, joining uh, private and public uh, efforts. Uh, uh, I'm referring, for example, to, to uh, IMP, Integrated Maritime Policy Strategies, that the region can uh, develop uh, listening to this community uh, and, and, and consulting this, uh, this community to address their, their, their choices. So there are a, a lot of several uh, um, formal uh, streams where you can uh, actually deploy uh, your 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 uh, community results and and reflection um, concerning sustainable tourism. Well, uh, it's kind of a buzzword, I know, and uh, uh, it can be said that uh, of course we have to be of course we have to be sustainable. Um, uh, I I think uh, it, it's of course a political issue. Uh, because everybody wants sustainability, but then, then you have to decide to pay a cost for it, to to to, to take uh, uh, to, uh, to 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 manage it, your growth, your choices on how you manage your resources, your territory according to some principles that can be also very costly in terms of uh, uh, of uh, consensus, let's say. So I, I think that uh, we have um, we have. Uh, a number of policies in place, they all address this uh, uh, concept and make it real. We can further develop uh, uh, those policies and, 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 and then we have to, to actually um, use, use those policies. MSP is just one, uh, Maritime Spatial Plan is just uh, one, 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 one example. The, the weakest part of the story maybe uh, this regard is the fact that uh, uh, sh sustainability should be should be uh, more clearly recognized, and uh, and uh, in terms of financial resources, I mean, should be sustained more uh, um, uh, in 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 in, the, in, a, in a sense that you you uh, use the resources according to some uh, sustainability uh, indicators and, and targets more directly than than we do than we do now. Thank you, Susanna. Thank you. Well, I would like to make emphasis, I mean, it's uh, probably in the direction of Roberto, but it, probably in the opposite direction. I would like to make emphasis in the, in the coordination, in the uh, integration, in synergies, in, as Alessandra said, it's, I mean, tourism is huge, it's highly, I mean, it's, it's very transversal issue, it's cross-cutting, it's impacting in, I mean, every sector, and I think it's, it should be seen in the umbrella of blue economy and interacting with all economic actors, economic and social actors. From the experience we are having here, I mean, the exercise we are doing, I'm really surprised. We are all surprised how much things are going on that 
the people were not aware, even within probably the administration, and the amount of synergies that you can explode from both sides. For instance, one example could be the Blue Health. The Blue Health is a, is a new research area in which, I mean, I'm honestly, I'm surprised to see how it, the potential that it has and the relation that could it have also within tourism. And probably this is something that before we started, I never thought that I should have this kind of collaboration with the health department within the government, no? And this kind of interaction, also a structuring, as um, Andrea said, for us was very important to structure the scientific community, so to have a, a maritime network of science, and also to have the uh, a maritime community in the, co in, in the economic sectors. And the amount of synergies you realize you have, I think it's amazing. And also you mentioned that uh, in, the, in this um, uh, participation you will have conflicts. But I think that we'll, mostly you will avoid conflicts. We, you, we are seeing today, for instance, the conflicts we are having with wind farms when ha suddenly happen in one place, and it's, it's a huge problem with fisheries, with tourists, with everything. Is before having the wind farm, we are all sitting together in the same table. I think never before the fishing sector was in touch with the, with the energy sector, the tourist sector, before anything happened. So if this comes up after uh, a consultation, after a consensus you know, from these tables, of course, when you start, you have a conflict. But in the end, I think it will match, I mean, it will be more what you are avoiding in the future that we are losing now. And also, I think this co-management thing, I mean, we are realized also that you require capacity building to participate in this co-management process because it's, it's a change. I mean, you are changing really the way of doing policy. I mean, before people used to come and to do your own lobby. So, and come to talk uh, to the administration about their own vessel or their own, I don't know, business. And no, we are doing policy all together. So you are here, I mean, designing a policy within a co-management com com uh, committee, but a, a country policy, no? So for the interest of everybody, with everybody around the table. So, of course, the tourist community, I think, would be very important in, in exchanging good practices, good experience. But I think I strongly, um, well, think I encourage this kind of interaction. I see a lot of synergies that honestly, before doing this exercise, I, I didn't expect it. And it's really, uh, it's very rich. I mean, the, the advantage you could have. Thanks, Susanna, for sharing the needs for participatory processes in a way to avoid and to anticipate conflicts and to uh, look for common solutions. That's, that's probably the best way to do it. And I think the uh, capacity building of the different actors uh, is critical because you can't have the same level of knowledge from you know, the fishermen uh, to you know, the wind uh, engineers uh, or coming from the uh, tourists, uh, tourism industry uh, actors, so that's critical. You want to say a few words maybe before leaving? Just, just, uh, just a final message from my side, and then I'm sorry that I have to leave. Uh, I think that is absolutely relevant, the fact they are not only uh, using participatory approaches for a transparent process and take decision. They are taking the responsibility to develop a strategy. You know, this, this is the point. This is the point. And then within the strategy development, they are using, you know, stakeholder engagement tools and approaches. But there is a decision there to develop a strategy, and tourism is part of the strategy. This is the point. And the regional level, to me, is the best level, of course, within a, a national framework and EU framework to, to actually develop such kind of vision. That's the point. And I hope Emilia Romagna will do the same Absolutely. very soon. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, and I think also we Thank are going forward much. this regional strategy, maybe as a Mediterranean level, I think UFM would be probably the best partners to actually uh, uh, coordinate so inputs from these different countries. So we still have time for a few questions. Um, if any questions. Um, <laughs> I can pick up some names, but I think now uh, it's not any more necessary. <laughs> Thanks, Andrea. Yeah, we have got more questions. Thank you. Just present. 
Yeah, introduce yourself uh, quickly. Jose Rodriguez from Barcelona Provincial Council. We are also partners of Blater Met and, and or part of the organization of this event. I, I just want to, to reinforce this idea that Miguel and Susana mentioned, that the relationship between uh, blue economy and tourism is not evident. When preparing this uh, event, uh, you know that we organized eight uh, parallel sessions with different topics. And we try to involve uh, not only partners from Interreg uh, projects, but also uh, stakeholders from the tourist sector. And many of them ask us, what is blue economy? And they are working in the tourist sector, but they don't know what, it, what uh, blue economy is. And I'm sure that if we ask them, what is integrated coastal zone management strategies? They don't know. If we ask what are maritime spatial planning, they don't know because they don't need it. Because they work in, in their economic sector, in their daily activities. So I think there is clearly a gap between uh, blue economy strategies, forums, conventions, and so on, and the reality of the tourist sector. Um, I don't know it's a topic of wording, of, of the methodology, of, the, of uh, how these processes are going on, uh, or even the competences, uh, because uh, when you analyze who, for instance, who is um, intervening in the management of the coastal areas, you see there are a lot of competences, there are a lot of administrations, uh, some of them overlapping, some of them complementary. Uh, so it's, it's, it's complicated uh, to work with this uh, network of agents, uh, stakeholders, and, and so on. So it's just, uh, just a reflection. A reflection. I, I don't know what could be the solution. Thanks, thanks. That's, that's, that's amazing because actually, uh, as a co-union, we're going to deliver a report on governance of the blue tourism uh, of uh, different world marine regions, so including the Mediterranean, but also um, Caribbean and uh, Western Indian Ocean. So trying to see how we can actually regulate or at least to engage with different actors, including the private sector, um, based on the environmental impact of tourism, which is uh, very high, as you, as you know. Uh, and this is, uh, we are uh, seeing that there is a kind of uh, different gaps in governance of uh, of uh, marine and tourism uh, activities. And uh, uh, the report will be, will be published in the coming weeks. Uh, it will be presented in Paris, the 20th of June. This is a report that is actually uh, developed together with the French Ministry of Environment and the French and the international think tank IDRI. Uh, you are very much welcome to attend. Some of you will be there. And, and I think also this is a basis to have discussions and to try to connect uh, blue tourism with the blue, eco blue economy uh, initiatives and also to try to see how we can handle that, uh, not only on a national, local, or even regional basis, but also to try to do it on a different uh, supra-regional basis because the actors are sometimes the same, or, you know, in particular, you know, in the crew from the cruise industry or from the, you know, the resorts, you know, they are global players, so we need probably to have global instruments, or at least global platforms to engage with them. So uh, there is, uh, this, uh, we believe there is this kind of um, need to reflect on that, and we'll be happy to share this report uh, through the UFM uh, knowledge platform, but also directly uh, through your uh, different participants. So thanks a lot. So I think we are perfectly on time. Thanks a lot for you uh, being here. Thanks a lot for the speakers. And we we'll see you in the, in the uh, final uh, closing session just now. Thank you.